All right, our next lab, lab number 12, is the asthenosphere lab. Easy flow. In class, make sure you put your name on this. The problem, the purpose, how does the rock and the asthenosphere behave? How do the massive tectonic plates move across the surface of the earth? Can we model the asthenosphere with household kitchen materials? Hypothesis. We can hypothesize that because the blank plates actually move, we're talking about the tectonic plates, of course, that there must be some driving force below them that causes this motion. The only two possibilities are that they move themselves or something moves them. It's pretty much understood that they don't move themselves. It isn't some external force that moves them the moon, the sun, gravity from Mars, something like that. There must be some driving force below them that causes this motion. It's been theorized that there is a layer within the upper mantle, just below the plates, that permits the tectonic plates to move. This layer within the upper mantle is known as the, starts with an A, asthenosphere. This layer is believed to be made up of Blank, blank, and partially blankety blank rock. It's still solid. Imaging of the earth reveals that it's not liquid, it's not molten until you get all the way down to the core. The mantle is still solid, but this layer is believed to be made up of hot, weak, partially plastic, or maybe even somewhat molten, but not completely melted. Floating on top of this layer, the asthenosphere, which is hot, weak, and plastic-like with some molten properties, floating on top of this is the, starts with an L, the lithosphere, which actually is the plates. The lithosphere consists of the crust. It's not the same as the crust, and the lithosphere also includes the upper portion of the mantle. Um, there's an overlap. If this is the crust, which is made predominantly of oxygen and silicon and aluminum, and then the mantle is down below, it's actually the thickest layer, made up of heavier elements, nickel, magnesium, some iron, aluminum, calcium, things like that. Then the overlap, actually the crust and the upper portion of the mantle, that these together, these, are the plates. And below them is the plastic-like part of the mantle known as the asthenosphere down below. We will try and model this plastic-like layer, the asthenosphere, to show how plate motion might be possible. The word blank is simply a way to say that some solid materials can actually behave like a fluid. If you think of a Walmart bag, those thin, not the Walmart bag, but the produce bag, those thin produce bags that you put your bananas and apples in at the grocery store, if you take one of those and you pull and stretch it, what happens to it? Well, it stretches and deforms and it does not snap back. So it's not elastic, it's not elasticity, but plasticity, okay? Plasticity is a way to say that some materials can actually behave like a fluid. So in the lab room, we're gonna do this, and you can actually do this at home. Those of you at home, you need water, cornstarch, which is used in baking, 
and a spoon. All right. In the lab room, we're going to have one eight ounce cup filled one quarter of the way up with water. Don't use more water than that because water can absorb an incredibly large volume of cornstarch. So if you use a lot of water, you need boxes and boxes of cornstarch. So you only need a couple ounces of water, maybe half a cup at the most. Then we're going to have a second larger cup that has your supply of cornstarch. Use one spoon to add a heaping spoonful of cornstarch into the water and stir. Keep adding cornstarch one spoonful at a time and continue to stir. It'll take a lot of cornstarch. Finally, the cornstarch will cause the water to start thickening, which is what it's used for in baking. It's a thickening agent to make gravies and things like that. Once it becomes very hard to stir, then you can start using it as an analogy to the asthenosphere. Examine the mixture by holding it and observing how it flows. Pour it out of the cup. See how it flows when allowed to move slowly. Observe how the material flows when forced to move. Push it with your hands. Roll it up into a ball. Knead it and push it together and then allow it to flow. Safety. This lab can be extremely messy, but it's not dangerous at all. Please be sure to blank up your lab table when you're finished. The material will not harm you in any way, so analyze the material closely. Move it in your hands. Press the material between your palms. Smoosh the material on the table and describe its motion. Please be sure and clean up. All material, when done, can go down the drain. goes down the sink. Just run the water and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, so we have our cornstarch. We have our cup that has some water in it. And we'll start making our mixture now. And you're gonna see that it actually takes, I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of water here. <clears throat> and we're gonna make our model asthenosphere, heaping spoonfuls. And then we stir. Same one, heaping spoonfuls, and then we stir. There's three, and it's still not thick at all. Okay. In fact, look here. Still stirs very easily. stirs very easily. Beginning to thicken a little bit, but not really. Let's do this. A big one. Another one. Still not thickening yet. It's amazing how much cornstarch that amount of water can absorb. Okay. There. Ah, now. Now we're beginning to thicken. Okay. A little bit more. All right. Okay. Might have overdone it. Let's see. Let's put this back here. Okay, let's see. Stir. Actually looking like it might be the perfect thickness, perfect amount here. Quite easy to break the spoon because now it's behaving like the material that we want it to behave like, plastic-like, plasticity. Now this is perfect. All right. Take my watch off. Take my rings off. It's not going to hurt that stuff. But easier to clean up. Here we go. I'm going to pour this out. You can see the ways in which this material behaves. It looks like a puddle. Yeah? <clears throat> Simply looks like a puddle. And yet, I can move it in such a way that it is behaving 
somewhat like a solid, and yet it flows like a liquid. Move it like a solid, and yet it behaves somewhat like a liquid. All right? Let's get a closer look here. All right? <clears throat> behaves and crumbles like a solid and yet flows like a liquid. When I force it to move, when I force it to move, you can see it breaking. Breaking. You can see it crumbling like rock and like dirt. Uh, and yet it flows like a liquid. This is so easy to do. Cornstarch at the grocery store costs about $1.90 and your water. And then you do this. Nope, and then it flows. <laughs> and this is where it gets messy. This is where it gets messy when you start doing this. But you can see that it behaves both like a solid I can wad it up into a ball. I can roll it up into a ball. I can roll it up into a ball. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. And yet, when allowed to flow, flows like a liquid. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Now, obviously, the asthenosphere is incredibly hot. Not like this stuff. But, yeah. All right. And as you play with this, your hand actually absorbs the water. And it begins to dry out and gets crumblier and crumblier and crumblier. But in order to clean this up, very easy. Down the drain it goes. Down the drain, just like baking. Piece of cake. Nice and easy. Behaving like a solid and then a liquid. Alright, that's our material. Now that you've had the opportunity to create your own asthenosphere with cornstarch and water, we can do some analysis and answer some questions. Here's a cross section almost identical to the one I drew, but it is significantly more detailed. Okay. You have four locations that you need to label, asthenosphere, continental crust, lithosphere, oceanic crust. It's hard to see, but this material right here, they actually make a little bit darker. It's also hard to see, but this is a coastline right here. And this is water right here. And these are obviously mountains. So we have also a breaking point right here. So what's the difference between this and this? We have water out here. So this is ocean crust. And this is Continental crust, and there is a difference. Ocean crust is mainly made up of basaltic rock. Continental crust, what is it made up of? Starts with a G. Granitic rock. Underneath that, you actually have the upper portion of the mantle, but this upper portion of the mantle is still hard and rigid. So this right here actually behaves as one slab. And we're talking about slabs that are sliding and moving along. We're talking about the plates. So lithos means solid rock, lithosphere, sphere of rock. These are the plates, the lithosphere. Down here, you'll often see it drawn with horizontal dash lines like this to represent that it has weakness, that it permits flowing, weak, there's that prefix right there, 
Asthenos. Asthenos means weak. So we're talking about the asthenosphere right there. Okay. The material that you model in this lab represents which of the four layers shown in this diagram. Well, obviously, it's the weak, mushy, flowy one, and that is asthenosphere. Yeah. What does the Greek word lithos mean? Lithos means rock or stone. Jump down to the questions. Define plasticity. A solid's ability under the right conditions to do what? To flow like a fluid, like the produce bag that I was talking about. Elastic is different than plasticity. Describe how the material behaves when allowed to flow in your hand with no pressure. Now, if you didn't do this at home, you could refer to the segment of the video where actually showed you what it looks like and how it does behave. Describe how the material behaves when allowed to flow in your hands with no pressure. Well, it flows freely. Reacting to gravity, spreading out. Basically, it behaves and moves like a liquid. Describe how the material flowed when pressure was applied and it was forced to move quickly. Well, from the video or from doing it, it crumbled. It cracked. It broke. It no longer flowed. It behaved how? Behaved like a solid. And that's what rock will do with incredible amounts of pressure. And when it is forced to move quickly. Question four asks, how do geologists believe the asthenosphere is like the mixture? Well, the asthenosphere has a lot of pressure on it, has millions of tons of weight of the overlying tectonic plates on them. How could though, how could that allow the plates to move. Well, you got to remember the timeline. How did y'all believe that a asthenosphere is like the mixture? It is plastic-like. And if it is allowed to move slowly, then what? Then it can ooze and flow. And the plates slowly move on top of it. Okay. Question five. Based upon what we've learned so far about the tectonic plates, do you think that the mixture is a valid representation of what lies below the lithospheric plates? For those of you at home, this is for you. This is your question. I'm not gonna answer this, but you will need to answer it within the context of Canvas and the assignment. Lastly, ultimately, what is the one energy source that drives the tectonic plates? Talked about at the beginning. The only logical answers are that the tectonic plates either move themselves or something else is moving them. We pretty much know that they don't move themselves and the force that does move them is not external. So there's an internal force. What is that energy source that drives the tectonic plates? The 
molten interior heat engine of Earth's core. All right. For those of you in class, you write your conclusion. Those of you online, make sure that you answer all aspects of the online lab and then submit it. Thank you very much. Good luck.